Hey guys, John Grimsmo here, bringing you yet another epic knife making Tuesday. Blade Show, which is the world's biggest knife show, is just a few days away and I am getting ready like crazy to have as many knives as I can bring to the show. Um, this video we're, we're working on inlays. Now, I made a bunch of my knives with plain handles, no patterning or anything like that, so that I could machine an inlay. Um, it's kind of been fun carrying a plain one, I've never done that before. But they're, they're quite slippery, like they feel super nice, but uh, you know, trying to get into my pocket and grab it, they're just kind of slippery. And uh, the pattern that I usually do helps with that, but uh, inlays are going to help with that too, and they're just going to look phenomenal. So here's a sneak peek at one of the inlays I've been working on. This is carbon fiber because it makes it go faster. Um, super awesome. This is going to wrap around the pivot hole about like so. And then there'll be another one that goes in the back and they just look wicked. Swing. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that. And there's my inlay pattern. Three inlays. It's so shiny. It's that uh, Tormac Superfly cutter gets the surface so shiny. Looks like it worked pretty good. Not bad for a first time running a code. I think it did exactly what I wanted it to do. So the best way I figured out how to make these inlays is to glue them to a fixture. And uh, so far, the only glue I've tried that I've worked that's worked really well is typical CA glue. Uh, you can buy it at any hobby store, airplane store. I got this from um, USAKnifeMaker.com, but I mean, this I've been buying this kind of brand for the past 15 years. Um, and then also an accelerator. So this is the uh, thin, the super thin one to three second glue with an accelerator that makes it even faster. Um, and the trick with this is you put you squash the glue onto the fixture and you spray the accelerator onto your sheet of whatever material, this happens to be carbon fiber, so that the second you bond them together you get instant adhesion um, within probably a second or so and that gives you that second to squish it down, make sure it's flat, no air bubbles or anything like that. So I'm going to do this guy right here, the bottom one, and I figured out I can fit it exactly in this little leftover right here so that just helps save material a little bit. So I'm going to spray this guy first. That was probably too much. So I'm going to eyeball it so it's close. Put a bunch of glue on there and I found that a good amount works really good. They're relatively easy to get off. and then just push it down. That's probably good after two seconds, but it doesn't hurt to overdo it a little bit. And then I, I don't want to, you know, force it, but it feels pretty firm to me. And then I like to let it dry for a couple minutes, just because. Um, it's annoying when it pops off. I, I've had it pop off a few times when machining and I figured out that more glue works better. Obviously putting the accelerator on the material and then squishing them together works better. So all these little tricks really come together. And it's just experience, you know, you practice. And, um, you know, keep trying until you get it right. So we're going to let that set and then machine that last little guy out. I just wanted to mention that footage of the inlays might be a little disjointed and I won't get to narrate as much as I want so I'm just going to show it because a lot of times I'm wearing my dust mask and I can't talk or the air compressor's on or whatnot. But um, yeah, so it'll just be a lot of footage. For the first um, few inlays that I did, I just used this end mill, which is a Lakeshore Carbide 2 flute stub uncoated. 
and it works fine, but it, it seems to wear out. Um, carbon fiber is really abrasive, and it just it wears them out not super fast, but it's starting to get a little bit dull. Um, so for this next batch, I'm going to use this guy, which is a diamond flute pattern uh, router end mill, specifically meant for cutting fiberglass, laminates, composites, carbon fiber, etc. Um, this was actually given to me by another YouTube uh, guy, a subscriber to my channel, just watched my videos, a guy in England, and um, he just said, you know, our company machines a ton of carbon fiber, I want to send you a bunch of these, so he sent me three of these, and he said they are the hot ticket for machining carbon fiber, so I'm going to try this out. I know I've seen them available online um, from a few places before, but I've never tried them, so we'll see. So what I'm actually going to do is rough it out with this one and then finish it with the two flute end mill. I don't know if it's necessary, but this might give a really clean finish. We'll just have to look and see. But I know right now that my, my tolerances work perfectly with this end mill. So I'm going to you know rough it out with this and then finish it with that. It's really tricky to film while doing this because technically I should be wearing my mask at all times. And um, like after the machine's done I shouldn't just take off the mask because there's still all this junk in the air so technically I should be using this until for a while until the dust has a chance to settle on the ground and be swept up but I don't know So gluing them down this way, and then popping them off with a little knife, um, it works so good because all the glue tends to stay on the fixture. The part has hardly any visible glue, maybe a tiny super thin layer. Um, so it's like really clean. And then if, if it did have globs of glue on here, I could just, you know, flat sand it. Um, but it works so, so good. And then to face, face the glue off on every pass to the same depth, sometimes I might go down a few tenths of a thousandth of an inch just to get fresh metal but um, it works awesome so you may be wondering why I only chose to do like one pair and this one kind of in a weird place normally I like to try to maximize everything and try to fit as many parts onto the sheet as possible but I have a lot of weird carbon fiber sheets like this that I can fit you know I can fit one piece in there I can fit some right there um, and this was sort of just my tester fixture so that I could make just individual sizes. Um, the top ones and the bottom one are, are separate operations, so I keep them all separate. And, you know, this is one knife, it's a pair, so it just kind of works out better sometimes to do everything one by one um, instead of trying to be super maximum efficient. I'm not, I'm not making enough of these to justify, you know, using a whole sheet and just busting out the entire sheet for inlays yet, so maybe one day, but... But, I mean, these things look so good.
and I got the tolerances just right so that for the most part they pop right in and then the glue will keep them in but I mean look at that sticks up thirty thousandths of an inch they'll get glued in place obviously I'll show you that later in the video once I do it and then they have little vent holes in the back I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that one it's off center it looks stupid but um, yeah little vent holes so that the glue can squidge out of there Ta-da!
So I've been having excellent success making these inlays. I've had to tweak the tolerances a little bit inside the hole. That's about it though. Lightning strike carbon fiber. This has little, uh, I forget if they're copper or bronze or brass filaments inside, if it'll focus. Um, <clears throat> the theory is that it was designed for Boeing um, to dissipate a lightning strike. But now, um, uh, knife maker Matt Diskin from Vulcan Knife Works, um, knife, something like that, is pretty much the exclusive maker of this, and uh, he's awesome. I've met him on a few knife shows, really nice guy. So, then, machine a pocket like so, and then press in the inlays. Oh, nice. Love it. Absolute perfect fit. I actually had to use a, <clears throat> a dead blow hammer to, to fit them in. They're that tight. But the dead blow just pops them right in, and uh, these aren't glued in yet. So I'm going to have to pop them out. And to do that, I've got these three little vent holes there, there, and there that go all the way through. That when I put glue in there, it'll let the glue and the air bubbles escape. And it serves double duty because now when I take the handles off the fixture, I can push the inlays out, pop them out um, for test fitting and, and future gluing and stuff. But yeah, the tolerances are just perfect. Just super tight. Love it. For the show, I've got four inlay knives that I'm bringing, um, plus the one in my pocket, which is mine. That'll make five inlays that I have to do. And then uh, after I get home, I've got two customer knives uh, Jason and Kevin, I believe, um, that have inlays, uh, carbon fiber inlays. So after I get home from Blade Show, I'll be doing those. But yeah, the uh, inlay knives for Blade, and then these ones are also going to Blade, Honeycomb. I still have to anodize them, but otherwise they're, they're perfect, they're sharp and everything. Um, and then I've also got a couple left dizzles that I'm working on. for Blade Show. So this diamond cut router end mill that I've been using lately, it works really, really, really good on carbon fiber. I really like it. And it uh, it leaves a really nice finish too. I just don't know how accurate it is. You know, how, how tolerant it is. Um, if that thing's exactly at an eighth of an inch or if a regular style end mill is more accurate. So I'm still finishing with the two flute regular style end mill, but uh, yeah, that thing makes much more manageable chips. It um, it just sort of makes dust piling up around the thing instead of flying it everywhere like the two flute does. So I like it. It's good. And because it's such an aggressive pattern, it should stay sharp for a long time. This is uh, moon glow, glow in the dark. And if you'll notice, the area right around the cutter actually glows as it's being cut, as it heats up. side. 